Okay. Those two things don't bother me at all. What time is it where you're at? Take a guess. I'm terrible with that. Um, are you guess. behind me or in front of me? Uh, it's it's uh, we are we are ahead of you, right? You're ahead of me. Are you in the same day as I am? Are you on the 21st still or are you past midnight? Almost. No, no, almost, almost close to midnight. It's like 22, 30, that's a 10, 30 p.m. for midnight. 10, 30 p.m. Okay, wow, wow. That's really cool though. I mean, that's cool that you like are willing to work and do the hours like that and stuff. And that's awesome. Yeah. I love to travel. Hours. So you like to travel? maybe I'll get over there to meet you sometime. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, even I'm, we are planning to you know, move to the U.S., in six months from now uh, to meet with our clients and build like a really strong connection there. Hopefully we can meet okay. there. So, yeah. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. So what I will structure this call is like how I will structure it is. First of all, I would like to you know understand where you are right now, where exactly you are ideally looking to go. And then if possible, uh, how to align ourselves to that, right? Uh, so okay. I'll start by asking a few questions if that's okay with you. Sure. Cool. Can you tell me, like, over to you then, Rene, what exactly made you say, you know what, this, I have a big challenge I want to solve in this call, when you got the call from my team, what made you say yes to this meeting? Um, honestly, because I'm just open to any new type of ideas um, in the market that we're in right now, um, trying ways to get in front of people. It's a tough market right now. I've been in the business on the mortgage side for 12 years and I did real okay. estate for, or also did the title side of the transaction. So, I mean, overall, I've been in the industry pretty much since I got out of high school. I also did the building side, um, new construction type stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen a little bit of all of it and just the market that we're in right now is it's really tough. Um Things aren't uh, selling. Think, Buyers are scared. Okay. It's like the inventory is like where you are right now. What, which state are you licensed in? I'm in. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. the market is tough when you say that. Like, is it because the inventory is low or the demand is low? What exactly? How does it look like? The inventory is pretty low. And especially for any like decent house really um prices have gone up a lot and with rates being higher there's i don't know that people can't qualify but they don't want the mortgage payments you know mm -hmm. people don't want what they're at right now and um i've had a few buyers lately where i've pre-approved them they're good pre-approvals but they want one specific house and so it's like if that house doesn't work then they're really not in the market to continue to look it's just a it's a weird market right now i don't know um, and I know it's going to shift, but it's just been, it's been a pretty hard market for a while now, a lot longer than we normally go through when you go through these mm -hmm. up and down type spells. So, I mean, um, the most, most people I speak with, right. Uh, they say that the last two years has been the most challenging, right. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and the, now with the market interest rates are getting down again. Uh, so, you know, things are looking positive in the future, right. What, what, what has been like, if, what has it been like for you? Like. Uh, what was the best that you've all time best? Let's say uh, you were doing well, good. just like everybody else. It was COVID 2021, whatever, you know, when the rates were stupid low. I mean, that's your, your best, best. But honestly, if I could go back, I wouldn't have done it again. I would have gone back to like 20, probably 18 ish. Um, our rates were in the fives, but that was the expected rate. You know, nobody thought we were going to get these crazy low rate. So there wasn't anything to say that that was a bad rate. The market was pretty steady at that point. House prices weren't rising, but they weren't, people weren't um, doing short sales. Like they were able to sell without mm -hmm. losing money. So we were like in a pretty stable market all around. Um, and I think it's going to be really hard to get back to that point. Um, there's a lot of people with a lot of equity in their homes, which is great. Um, but we had heard too that foreclosures are on the rise, and which baffles my mind because why don't you just sell if you can't make your mortgage payment? You're going to make money on it. It's not like it used to be where people were upside down in the houses. Mm -hmm. So if they were selling it with all the short sales, you're not doing that. So um, there is definitely a lack of inventory. There's a lot of pent up buyers. So when we do finally start to get inventory again, it's going to be another crazy 
market with people paying over asking price, putting cash in the market, mm -hmm. doing all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I don't know where that whole, how they're going to level it back out again. It's going to be real interesting. Um, but in the meantime, I'm trying to get enough business that I can stay in the business because I love this industry. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I, what can I do to be different to continue okay. to get the buyers in the meantime? Okay. Makes sense. So, so what I sense is like, you know, you are trying to add predictability to this current situation, even though the market yeah. is, uh, the market is down, but still you want predictability and proper flow inside so that you still have a higher chance of, you know, playing around with it. Would that be right. Right. Okay. All right. And, and uh, just uh, so that I can gain some clarity on the numbers, like, how many loans on average do you do right now uh, on a monthly basis uh, and how many applications or prospects you're speaking with uh, to get to that number? So I would say I probably on average do two loans a month right now, which is terrible. And to get to that number, it's probably taking about six applications, um, which is also terrible because that's not my usual <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like I said, it's people that are pre-approved and just not doing anything, can't find yeah. what they want, don't want the payment, whatever it may be. So do you do you see anything that uh that can push them through that situation? Because let's say, you know, because anyone can get applications, right? Uh and right. if you can get pre-approved, but at the end of the day, the loan is what we are targeting, right? If they right. don't close, then it doesn't make sense. We so don't what, get paid. Exactly. So what exactly uh, do you think is missing there that if you could have made it possible, then that could help them take the decision moving forward? Or is it external completely? Uh, to do with realtor partnerships and, and trying to get the realtors, because once I tell the realtor they're pre-approved, that's as far as I get to go with taking it in regards to finding them a home. I can explain to them why it is a good time right now to buy, you know, and we're talking to buyers and we're like, look, rates have come down some, buy now and a year from now we'll be refinancing because we all believe rates will come down, you know, within mm -hmm. the next year. And there's plenty of reason to believe that. So it's like, buy now, find the house you like, don't be in a competitive situation because once rates really come down, like I said, I think we're going to be back into that multiple offer situation. So it's kind of educating them and trying to get them to really believe that so that they will want to look on our side. But then it's having the right realtor partner who's like, let me find that house. Whether the house exists right now or not, let me find that house. And I think even realtors are tired of it and all the stuff that they're going through right now, all the changes to their commissions and whatnot, you know, I think mm -hmm. that they're tired of it. Um, a lot of them have gotten out of the business. A lot of loan officers have gotten out of the business. Um, so just, I don't know. I'm not, okay. I don't want to sound negative because I do know it's going to turn around. Like I, I'm still in it because I believe that. And I, like I said, I love my job, but um, it's, it's hard right now. It's hard so. to say. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Uh, and also, like, is it 100% referrals? I heard you, you know, I listened to the call that you had with my teammate. Uh, you said, like, it's 100% referral uh, applications that's coming in right now. Correct. Yes. I am 100% referral based. I don't do any type of lead gen to bring Have you ever leads. tried that? Ever tried that? Any experience? I that? have not tried Legion for myself. I have partnered with realtors to do Legion platforms that they like or that they want to do. Um, I've done Zillow, Realtor.com. I've done um, a, a program called Sync with agents that was, it was like a big team. So they have multiple agents using this program. I have found that they're all a waste of money. I've had one Zillow partnership with a realtor where um, for about probably about a year and a half, um, we did really, really well with it. And it was before Zillow made a lot of the changes that they made to their platform before they like started having their own agents and their own affiliations mm -hmm. with lenders and all that other crap. We did really, really good at it for about a year and a half. And then it basically went from that to being nothing. Um, mm -hmm. and so we ended up pulling out of that, um, and every other partnership I've ever done with it since then, I don't see okay. any return on investment at all. So is it because what I do you say? Uh -huh. Makes sense. I mean, do you, do you think it's because, uh, well, that's what I've heard, right? When you work with Zillow leads from LendingTree or, you know, stuff like that, 
then uh, what happens is like they're also sharing those information with other agents, other brokers. So exclusivity is missing there. So you end up you know, competing with people. Uh, that, has that happened with you as well? Do you think that can yeah, be a reason? I definitely think that that's part of it. Um, it's hard to know on my side because I don't get the initial touch with them. I don't get mm -hmm. the initial contact. Um, the last time I did Zillow with an agent, she swore that they really weren't getting the number of leads. And she sent me over what she said was the leads that they got. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, we reach out right away. And she's like, she prided on herself on being great at converting those and nothing. I mean, we were spending, I was spending $2,000 alone on my side a month to do this with her. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time with it. It's like, it would be really nice, you know, and it, and it's a great way if I did it on my own side and it actually worked to be able mm -hmm. to get realtor partners because they're always wanting those leads, you know? So if I can get somebody pre-approved, they're not working with the realtor yet. And I'm able to give a realtor a pre-approved buyer. Great. But I'm very, very leery of all of these systems because I don't mm -hmm. think there's exclusivity in any of it. Um, I feel like it's all a trap to get money, why can you do these things, but I can't do them on my own. I know social media. I, you know, I know Google marketing. I don't have enough time to sit there and spend with them, but we have people, every company I've worked for has a marketing department that supposedly mm -hmm. specializes in all these things. So why what you do, why is what you do any better than what I can do? And how are you guaranteeing these leads but I can't. That type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's essentially what I, that's what you're going to have to prove to me. That is like, I okay. am so, I've talked to people and a lot of times it's a lot of money up front. Like it's not, and that's another thing. We don't have to go too far into this call. The first two things you told me are perfectly fine and I'm good with. What I want to know is how much are you getting ready to try to charge me? Because it doesn't matter what you tell me you can do. I'm not going to believe it up front. You're going to have to prove ROI. it to me. Okay. So as long as the ROI positivity is there and then the qualification uh, actually makes sense and there is something actually there only then it makes sense to move forward or even talk about this correct correct okay yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at because i know all about this kind of stuff yeah. i mean i've researched tons of platforms um so yeah i mean that's kind of what i want to know but that's pretty much uh, also what i want to you know give you entire clarity on this call and yeah. uh, we have a trial period to start with because that's exactly what we don't want you to experience is you know, pay a lot of money up front and then we say blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, if I say anything, I can say anything. But if at the end of the day, as I said, the loans is what uh, matters to you and the market is right. down. So we need to test things up, see how this goes. And from your end, you give us a feedback. And then a month from now or six weeks from now, we sit down, research, you know, uh, analyze the ROI. If that makes sense to you, then we strategize for the next four months until you reach the goal uh, that we both discuss right now. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'll just, you know, share my screen with you and I'll go through this uh, overview of the process. Don't worry about the technicalities. I'm, I saw your Instagram, uh, you know, you are really <laughs> active on that. Uh, yes. So, yeah. So uh, yeah. we'll yeah. also need some I have, I have two Instagrams. I have a business one. I have a personal one. I probably don't do enough on my business one that I should be doing. Um, yeah. Definitely more on my personal one. And I should probably try to figure out a way to align the two of them, but yeah. <laughs> I saw the one where, I'm not sure if you shared it on both. I only saw one uh, where, you know, I think you have a dog, a uh, male. Yeah, Mako, uh-huh. Mako, Mako, right? Yeah, so th that yeah. one, I saw that. Yeah, that is okay. That's probably my personal page, <laughs> okay, okay. which is fine. I don't I don't make either one of them private, so it's fine that, um, but yeah, I'm definitely on that one a lot more. Yeah, uh, no, makes sense. Because I was looking to, you know, see how do you approach uh, video marketing as well? Because in today's day and age, uh, videos are really, you know, great way to connect virtually with people, right? Uh, right. So, yep. All right. So can you see my screen? Uh-huh. Okay. I'll give you a brief overview. You don't have to understand every technicality of it. But this is the home buyer's journey. Can you see it clearly or do, should I maximize it? No, I can see it. Okay. This is pretty much what we will be taking care of. And you will be taking care of after this. That's like the consultation call. 
Okay. Uh, we will first of all. Mm -hmm. So from your side, first of all, what we will take is the zip codes that you have preferred, any preferred zip codes that you know, okay, this this area, people are like more affluent. There is more okay. uh, spending uh, power, right? Purchasing power, income levels are high. So any suggestions from your side, plus uh, we will do our own research to find the proper targeting. And then what we will do is, you know, that's the first step of the process to get contact information that's exclusive to you as much as possible. Of course, they can already be speaking with other agents, but that's not on us, right? We can try to get this into your ecosystem so right. that from our end, there is no, uh, you know, sharing of these leads to other any other brokers, oh, sorry, loan officers. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So that's the first step of the process where we run the ads for you. Uh, then next step is like this, uh, intention check and information collection page. So at this stage, this is what it looks like. It's called, you know, you will be familiar with it. It's a landing page, right? So we'll ask basic yeah. questions to it, uh, for, to them. That's like, you know, what's the estimated uh, price of the home, gross income. And now people might lie in this point, right? It's not, people right. are not going to be 100% uh, honest about this, the credit score and stuff. But at this point, what we check is like, you know, are they willing to jump through hoops before they reach to you? So let's say 100% comes in from Facebook ads, raises their hands. 60% of them will take this step. So we know that the remaining 40% is a waste of time anyways. So the 60% right. goes through the process further. Then what we do is as soon as they you know, share the details here, that's when we consider them as a lead to us, to our system, like your, your uh, CRM, right? The one that I will be sharing with you. But you don't call okay. them. You don't contact them yet. There's still more potential there to filter. Then we send them, you know, automated SMS, uh, emails, reminders, and you know, voicemail drops, so that the, uh, you know, we can warm these people up. Okay. okay. And now these voicemail drops, uh, we will be, well, you know, needing you to share audio notes with us. You saying, hey, uh, this is Renee. This side, I saw you shared information with us. That'll be automatically, you know, shared uh, to them. And in this step, we also integrate videos. Uh, because you know, uh, videos are a really good way to virtually connect and uh, make them introduce yourself, right? Uh, introduce yourself to them. So at this stage, we will be using drip campaign with videos to warm them up, basically. So if your realtor referral is like an eight out of ten for you, right? It's a very mm -hmm. warm conversation uh, from a referral partner, right? Uh, sorry, referral prospect. Uh, if that's an eight out of ten for you, at this stage. They are still like a four out of ten, right? Five out of ten. Okay. So our goal is we nothing will beat referrals. Do you agree that? Do you agree? No, nothing will you know be beat, beat referral prospects. It's always the best. Oh yeah, goal. no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I couldn't hear you, but yes, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, referral prospects are the best. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. But that you know that lacks uh, predictability on that. So. Right. To add predictability, we compromise, let's say, if it, the referral prospect is 8 out of 10, our goal mm -hmm. is to get you 17 to 20 calls with maybe like 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, so that the predictability okay. and the flow can be, you know, added to the business. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So at this stage, what happens is we send them emails like this. Hi, hi Amanda. This is like... It's going to be Renee from CF Mortgage, right? You work with CF Mortgage? Mm -hmm. No, no, okay. no. I'm with, um, sorry, OVM, Annie Matt. Okay. okay, OVM. I, I don't know if I've even changed it, actually, on my Instagram. I don't know. Uh -huh. No worries, no worries. So uh, that's where, you know, we introduce you uh, with the emails and SMS. And then we will also link your personal Google Calendar uh, in the in this, you know, campaign. Okay. Right. So what happens is they can directly book themselves into your calendar. Uh, so that way, you know, they also show intention to speak with you and they're warmed up already. Uh, now, most people will not book them directly. So we will call them up and then book more appointments on your calendar. So that way, the number of appointments is increased. Do you follow? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this stage, you know, okay, the meetings are coming. Uh, sorry, book, appointments are being booked and they're in this stage. Then we will also add two more uh, videos in the campaign, which will be like your past clients 
uh, reviews or testimonials if you have any. And then, okay. uh, you know, before the call, before the consultation call, uh, what exactly, you know, they need to be prepared for the call, right? So that way what happens is like we are taking them through, you are taking them through virtually. And by the time they speak with you, they're really as close to the referral prospects that you speak with, but in higher volume. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much the system. So, so far, do you have any questions that, that you will think is a confusion for you? No. Have, have you even tried something similar to this or, you know, is this what you've tried before? No, I haven't tried. Okay. I haven't you... tried it in these steps like you guys are doing it. I have, and I haven't done Facebook or Instagram ads before because I don't really know. I don't understand the algorithms. I don't really know how all that works. And I know they constantly change it up. So mm -hmm. no, I have not done that. Um, okay. I know about landing pages. I've seen landing pages. I have a CRM. I do want to do some pre-recorded videos. Like, so I know each step that you're doing here, but I have not done it in a flow like that before. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, that's cool. No worries. Um, I'll just you know, give you the numbers here that, so that that makes sense. Uh, this is the client that I've spoken for in uh, Michigan. I was sharing about them, right? Uh, we mm -hmm. have worked with them for the last 10, 11 months. And, uh, you know, qualified people who shared the details was like 1,200, but only 33% will go through the, you know, appointment booking and scheduling an appointment with you. So okay. in the last, we have seen that uh, with, with the ad spend that they are doing, like what we suggest them to spend on Facebook ads is uh, $20 a day from your side okay. to Facebook. If you can do that, then we have seen 25 to 35 appointments booked every month, right? Uh, with seven out of 10 prospects, six out of 10 prospects. Uh, and then from there, 60% of them is the goal, 60 to 70% to show up on a consultation call with you. So every month, for the next month at least, to start with, uh, you know, 17 to 20 prospects on a consultation call uh, who are gonna be speaking with you. So that way, we are trying to get you at least five applications in the first 30 days, right? Okay. Um, so that you can see, okay, you know what? Do these applications have intention of moving forward with me? Do Are they closer to the referral? Uh, can we move ahead with this, basically? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much the numbers from our side. And uh, so we have a guarantee that... If our first goal is to, you know, get to a positive ROI, as you shared, that, you know, it doesn't make, it, it doesn't make sense to pay someone if there is no, nothing there, right? So right. we will not be taking any service fee upfront. There's no service free to, fee to us until you get those five applications. And then you tell us the feedback that, you know what, guys, it's good to go forward. Uh, then it's going to be $1,000 a month to us for the service. But for the first okay. four to six weeks, until we test it out, there is nothing to us. There's going to be one time set up here of $297 to set everything up for you, including the videos and everything. So that's that's one time set up for 297 You take care of the Facebook ads. We manage it for you. And after six months, we sorry, six weeks, four to six weeks, we analyze the ROI right there. Okay, so no service fee until you get five applications, then it's $1,000 a month. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. And so, you said 297 setup fee? 297 setup fee, yes. And then I'm also going to be paying out for the ads that are going to go on Facebook and Instagram? Yes. Yeah. Do you think something like this will be possibly uh, the, the thing that you're looking for or something similar? I don't know. I mean, yes and no. I, I get it because you're you're not charging the thousand dollars, and I'm I know that there's a lot to get it set up and onboarded because there's stuff you have to learn. You have to do the videos and the voiceover, different. Th I get that, so I'm not saying that that's not worth what you guys are doing. Um, I'd like to talk over with my um, my broker about it and see what they think because they know what I'm looking to do and see if they think that this is the right step. Um, and then kind of go from there. 
Okay. Uh, is there anything specific that you want to highlight to them so that I can take a note of that? Just in general, um, do for one thing on my side to be compliant in this stuff that we're doing, like in the ads, because we have a lot of compliance compliance stuff that we have to follow. And I don't want to get in trouble for any of that because they do mm -hmm. monitor part of when any company that you join, if you're a loan officer, and maybe it's different if you're a broker, I don't know, but um, we have to give access to our Facebook and our Instagram to our marketing department. And it's okay. a document you sign because they do, and they have to go in and make sure that we're following all the compliance stuff. Um, Okay. We can go to jail. We can have to pay fines. We can do all the other fun stuff. So yeah. I'm not trying to do either one of those. Um, but I just want to talk to them about that. And I also, um, I mean, mainly that's it. I just want to make sure on the compliance side that I'm good on that part of it. Um, so let me talk with them about mm -hmm. it. And then I will get back with you. Um can I reach back out to you or you reach back out to me either which way on Monday? And the only reason I ask that is because school's getting ready to start and I have two kids and we have open house yeah. today, open house tomorrow. We have football tomorrow, our first game. So, I mean, it's just a lot of stuff this week. That's the absolute only reason. And I have to make time to be able to talk to the broker in between that. Um, kind of looking forward to school starting next week because then I'll be able to focus more time on work and not worrying about what the kids are doing all day long okay. so um that makes sense i understand um yeah okay. so monday we can reschedule a call and okay. you can talk to your broker in the meantime and then give we can see how it goes from there okay yeah but monday would be great and the program sounds good um apart from just one question like uh just so that i can get some more clarity on this apart from the compliance stuff do you think there is something else that might be a hurdle moving, you know, for us to move forward or do you think the compliance is the only thing that is, uh, you know, you want to rethink about? Because it makes the sense. It's really the compliance piece. I mean, like I said, I understand the 297 and what that's used for, because I know that that's a lot of setup and that you have your own program that acts as a CRM where these people are getting put through and CRMs are expensive. I mean, I've looked at those on my own. Um, so, I mean, I get that. The ad spend, um, it is what it is. I mean, that's, one of the reasons yeah. I've never put money into Facebook or Instagram is because I don't know how to do it mm -hmm. with an ad that's going to reach the target audience that I want. And so exactly. I guess that's where y'all specialty comes in and whatever. So I get that. I mean, not saying that that's going to be easy right away. Let's you said $20 a day is like starting normal for Facebook. Yeah. Right? I mean, we have seen that uh, we have the case study for with that. So we start with that. Right. So and we're talking about 620 potentially for the first month or right around there just for this ad spend. Um, that's like, uh, you know, that's going to be daily. So your card will be added to Facebook and then in your mm -hmm. account. So Facebook mm -hmm. uh, is just going directly to Zuckerberg, right? Mark is going to yeah, take that. Exactly. Right? Making him more yeah. rich. I get it. <laughs> so it's yeah. like we, we don't get anything from there. So we need that to get, I mean, make sure the right amount of people are coming in. I've heard a lot of people use, you know, use that platform. Again, I, I wish I understood it better, understood the algorithms better. Um, because I'm actually set up on Facebook on my personal account as a, what do they call them? Um, an influencer or what is my account? Creator. Maybe I have something where I can make money. Okay. Uh, the creator account. I got it. Um, and I don't even know how I got that on, I'm just being honest. I don't even, I don't even know what I did to get it. So there's that. Um, but I, you know, I've taken some of the classes that they have that you have to take to get to like the next level up with Facebook. Um, and I still don't understand any of it. Um, yeah, I understand. Uh, no worries then. But I do uh, know that it works. I get it. I, I do. I get it. Um, so uh, Monday, what time do you think it would be possible for you to you know, have this call? Uh, then I can schedule it in my calendar. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Um, 
Do you have any calls coming up after this? Like any any uh, appointments today? Yeah, I have a two o'clock webinar that I've got to jump on. They're doing training on uh, on the new NAR stuff and how it impacts us, the commission stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I can do Monday morning. I could do probably nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. And then I have afternoon um I could do any time pretty I can do 12 30 one o'clock Monday right so yeah Monday uh give me your best shot like you know what's the most convenient to you because Monday pretty much I'm empty so far would be a good time for me same time we did today would it work really well actually 1 a uh, 1 p.m right afternoon uh-huh yeah okay all right so let's do this then um Take your time. Have fun with your kids. Have a really good weekend. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. I'll share the confirmation of the Monday call uh, after okay. this call. And then Sounds we'll good. see how it goes. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Nice Thank team you. talking to you, Renee. Have a good one. Yeah, day. nice talking to you too. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.